Come here, little girl. Hi, baby. Hi guys, this is that go and the little girl. Hey, uh, in this video I want to talk a little bit about my Seaberg jukebox. I picked this thing up about 2006 off an auction uh, for about $400. At that time it wasn't a bad price, but prices have gone since down. But, um, but anyways, I got it, needed a lot of work. and. Uh, you know, I, I knew some about electronics, but I don't know too much about the old electronics, so it took me a little while to restore this thing. But after about six months, I had uh, I have it ready to go, and, and I've had a lot of fun with it. Now, what I've been doing since in my game room, you know, a lot of people will come by, and some of them will just come, you know, both my, my wife and I have uh, our friends, different friends come in, and, and quite often they'll walk right in, and they'll see the game room, and they'll come in for... Yeah, generally 10-15 minutes and some people will stay here for a couple hours. It all depends on what we're doing there. But uh, the jukebox is always a, a big spot where people uh, look at right away. And uh, generally they might want to play one or two songs. And I've been putting, you know, the, the jukebox only takes 50 records and a lot of the records I have are the ones that can be, uh, they were remade with uh, uh, two hits, one on the front and one on the back, so actually you could play as many as a uh, hundred uh, sides off this uh, jukebox. And um, I changed, I've got a lot of records, a lot that I've had since I was growing up, and then I've bought some since, uh, a few boxes of them. Um, so what I do is I will, um, try at least what I was, I was trying to uh, change the the records, uh, six or seven songs, uh, maybe every quarter, uh, so that uh, people can see different different songs. What I was kind of surprised, though, is that um, I find uh, I keep hitting the same ones all the time, and uh, like certain things, I've got some people there that are they're in a club that uh, that play a lot of uh, old '40s music because they dance. Um, and yet, if they come by here, I, I've had six, seven old Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey songs, and I think one time did they hit uh, the Boogie Woogie uh, Tommy Dorsey on there. Other than that, I, I've never had the, the 40s music hit on the jukebox. And, and another thing that surprised me is like, um, I've always had a few uh, Elvis is on there. I thought everybody would want to play Elvis. Hey, at best, maybe one time did uh, Elvis ever came on one of the uh, uh, the titles. So um, I just been kind of keeping an eye on uh, which ones people seem to like and which ones that don't. And um, I finally came to a point where I'm not going to change my my records anymore. Uh, I've been doing this now for six, seven years, and I found pretty much the ones that people hit the same all the time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you off of the, uh, the title strips, uh, what are the ones on there, and quite a few of those, I'll, I'll show them what are the ones that, that people hit quite a lot. Now, just to give myself a, wrote down some of this stuff so I don't have to try to remember this. but. Uh, these are the ones that are most popular, that uh, people just come in and start hit. One is the, uh, the Green Onions by uh, Booker T and the MGs, which was done in 1962. Uh, another is the Morse Code of Love by the Capris, and that was done in 1962 as well. Then um, this one's very, very popular. True Love Ways, um, but the one the one that was done by Peter and Gordon, um, and that came in 1965. You know, that's actually a, a Buddy Holly uh, song from the 50s. But I guess most of my friends are growing up in the 60s, so uh, they remember this song when they played this version of it. 
Also, another very popular song was uh, Mountain of Love by uh, the Johnny River, uh, 1964. Also, the Duke of Earl by Gene Chandler, uh, 1961. Do You Love Me by the Contours by 1962, and Blue Moon by the uh, Marcells, 1961. Now, basically, all the ones that I have on the title strips are the ones that I get often uh, selections. But those ones I just mentioned to you are, are probably the, the most popular that I had. I thought I'd show you also on here, um, there are some songs that have to be on this jukebox because either I want it or my wife wants it. And I don't care if anybody else wants to play these or not. But these are, I thought you might let you know what are the titles of my wife. Whenever she wants to hit something, she always fits one of these two. One is um, Tainton Love by uh, Soft Cell uh, in 1982. And then also, this is the first one she always hits every time. Uh, should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash. Uh, in 1982. And then of course I have three that I have to have all the time on this jukebox no matter uh, whether anybody wants to watch it or not. And uh, now this is one from when I was growing up. You want that little girl? A little bit chihuahua now. This one's called uh, Karate Boogaloo uh, by uh, Jerry Jerilo. Jerry O, I think it's Jerry O, uh, 1966. Now, they did a few songs about uh, the karate, you know, when that got popular in the 60s, I guess. Um, and there were some that were a lot more popular. This one wasn't all that popular, but for some reason, I always liked this song, Karate Boogaloo. So um, I just like to have that on there, and it, I play it quite a lot. Here's another one. Now this one, this came from 1968. I'm 62, and uh, I grew up in the 60s, and my um, I got out of high school in 1969. And uh, this was a popular song, a slow song to play uh, when I was in high school. And it's called uh, Stay in My Corner by the Dells. Now this was a, a great song for people to dance with when you're going out to dances. And not only that, it, it was a long song. It would play five, six minutes. Uh, so it was a very, very long song. And I guess I've used that a lot uh, in those times too. So I've got to have that on there because anytime I had, it brings me right back where I was at some of these dances I used to go to. And then this last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to play this song. It's called Teardrops, and it was done by Lee Andrews and the Hearts, and that was done in 1957. Now this has something to me. Um, when I was a kid in the early 60s, uh, my dad went out and he bought a, uh, a used Wurlitzer 1015 for 25 bucks uh, from a uh, restaurant that was going out of business. And we took it down in the basement, and it had the records that were in it at the time. And uh, all those all those songs in there were 78s, but they're mostly rock and roll, and mostly stuff down in the, the late 50s. Um, and one of those songs on there was uh, Teardrops. And I loved that song. And I used to play that all the time when we, down in... Uh, in the basement in the 60s and playing from that that old jukebox so i like the song to begin with but it has a lot more memory to me than just the song uh, i when i have my own jukebox now uh, and i've got it on a 45 that i can play that now and every time i do it just puts me right back down there in the basement with that old Wurlitzer, and uh, so i i like that on there as well Okay, so that's what I've got, and I've got a lot of you guys that have jukeboxes. Um, 
see what you think. Uh, were those kind of songs that that you would consider uh, ones you'd put in if you had your a jukebox as well? Now I'm going to play this song as an end, and um, uh, I don't know whether uh, YouTube is going to uh, uh, turn off the sound for me because I have copyright. So we'll see what happens. Um, if it does happen, send me an email and say that uh, I didn't hear any music on it because they uh, they closed it for me. But um, but hopefully they won't. So because um, it's a song from the 1950s. Okay, so I'm gonna close now and uh, talk to you guys another time, and then I'll close with this little song of Teardrop and do a, a little tour in the meantime of that song uh, of my gamer. So for you guys, this is Atco. See you later. Yeah.